Mm -hmm. Welcome back, guys. So all week I've been sharing a special conversation I had with two local faith leaders about things that matter to most and how they can live a more meaningful life, righteous living. So we want to check out part three. How would, you know, in the world today, I mean, it's no secret that there's a lot of challenges going on sure. right now. Sure. How does one know or learn right from wrong mm -hmm. to pursue righteous living? It's me. Um, um, <laughs> Rabbi. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you find out, email me quick. Um, uh, so I, think, I think most people are trying to do the right thing. I think most people, uh, I think what drives people away from organized religion is, is a lot, is disappointment. Mm -hmm. I think they, people fall in love with this other stuff because they're not getting mm -hmm. that need filled from, from their faith. Mm -hmm. sure, um, sure. And maybe it's because you know, we, you know, we're too scripted. Um, it does seem to me that the more candid and honest mm -hmm. we are, the more transparent we are with ourselves and with others, um, I think there's a certain joy and peace that comes from that. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to hide anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I, I mean, if, if people are dropping away from religion, that, that may be because we just gave not you, of course, mm -hmm. but me, too many mm -hmm. boring servants. Mm -hmm. you know, just talk to me like I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and when it goes the opposite way, it's, 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 it's so reassuring to me because I don't have to be the smartest boy in the class anymore. Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm a seeker. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the answers. I appear to be one of the few clergy people in the United States to whom God is not speaking these days. I don't know whether it was something <laughs> I said or you know, I, don't know. I seem to be on my own. Um, <laughs> But, but, but maybe that's what I was meant for. I, I just think that honest searchers and seekers know what's right. They're just looking for a way to do it, you know? Um, and, and if they turn to us mm -hmm. and leave cold and disappointed, mm -hmm. they'll turn to something else. I mean, something will fill that vacuum. Mm -hmm. Just, I think, what you were saying is so important. Just be as candid mm -hmm. as we can be. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in Shreveport, you know, mm -hmm. there, there were these potholes in our synagogue parking lot, mm -hmm. and they never got fixed, it just got deeper. You know, and then we'd have a pothole committee to you know, get bids for the, you know, by the time we got bids, there was another board, they'd have won another, the potholes just got, there was a monsoon in Shreveport. I saw this kid, like, standing in front of this big pothole with, filled with water, and this kid was, like, decked out in, like, a land's mm -hmm. end. This kid had, like, a hat with, like, a roof, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, a raincoat down to his ankles, and he's standing in front of this puddle, and it's pouring, and I just thought to myself, can you jump? You know, you're standing right inside of the puddle, you got boots up to your hips, you're ready for this jump. And it's a lot of times the way I feel about faith, just jump, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you, you walk past a lot of puddles, mm -hmm. and the time goes by, yeah. jump, take a chance. Yeah. Do you think um, in the synagogue, are there people there struggling as well with righteous okay. living? Oh, I think so. So it's not just one it's denomination. All of us. Yeah. 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 Do you think, um, Bishop Davis, do you think there's a way, you mentioned, you know, distractions, which I think mm -hmm. right now is the number one thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is a way to kind of backtrack that to get people undistracted and to bring their hearts to God and to, um, to kind of not be so distracted? I don't think there's a way to get us undistracted. Um, I'm the pastor of the church, and I have to fight distractions as well. It's just there's just so much going on. And, but it's one thing to be to have a lot of things that can distract you. There's something else to give in to those. And I think one of the reasons you know why people tend to give in to so many of those distractions or tug you know tugs is because if we're trying to figure out how do you what's the source of righteous living? Again, if we get ten people in a room and ask them, you tell me your version of, of what's right, you can get ten different answers. So the great equalizer has to be, okay, well, what does the scripture say? And if we accept that the scriptures are, you know, God's word, infallible word, then, okay, I accept that these are the scriptures. And so it's from the, the holy scriptures that we then get God's standard of what's acceptable or not. And so that's where, you know, people are able to, to find what is God's standard, if they accept it. Because if they don't, then every man does what is right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. But if I come to the table saying I accept the Bible as God's inspired word, then I'd like to know what does the Bible say. A big part of the problem that leads to so many distractions, I think a lot of times people go to churches and what they're looking for is wisdom to help them grow in this, relation, this, this, this thriving relationship with Christ. And so many times we get everything other than that. We get emotionalism, we get speeches, we get yelled at and screamed at. And so much of what we get many times doesn't help you to know what do I do on Monday? Because if you really boil it down, Christians are phenomenal on Sunday. 
yesterday. We're amazing on Sunday. Super Christians. <laughs> Super. I mean, on yeah. Sunday morning from 11 a.m. to 1 or whatever the service time is, we're phenomenal. But when you leave church, what we need to know is how, do I, how, how can I be a better husband? And most people want to be a better husband yeah. with their husband. Most wives want to be a better wife. Most students want to be a better student. Most employees want to be better at work, even if it's for selfish reasons, to get promoted or increased. And so many times I think the topics that we deal with in church environments are not holistic enough. And that's the one thing I love about our Jewish brothers and sisters. You know, the, the, the Jewish scriptures, uh, you know, these are scriptures the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, teach these to your sons and daughters when you rise, when you wake, when you're walking by the way, which means this is a lifestyle. It's not just in your time in the synagogue. And it shouldn't just be for our time in church, which means our sermons and the way in which we relate has got to be more holistic. Yes, we got to give them the, the, the story of Calvary. Every week they need to know the story of Calvary. But I also need to know what do I do on Monday morning? I have this coworker who's irritating me to no end. I want to punch him in the mouth. How do I avoid punching him in the mouth and do the thing that God would have me to do? And if we don't talk about those types of things in our sermons that allow people to walk away and have practical, transparent understanding, then that becomes difficult. And, and, and along that same line, I think so many times as, as pastors and ministers, we can have a tendency to present ourselves as if we don't ever struggle with the things that people sitting in a pew do. And so it, the end result is, I hear you saying how great you do things, and I'm, not, I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. I want to hit my, my neighbor. Mm -hmm. I want to fight my coworker. Yeah. <laughs> and if I hear that the pastor just walks in love and it's, if it makes it seem like it's so easy, then sometimes it creates such a vacuum to where people feel like I could never get to that place. I think it's important for us to say as pastors that, hey, I experienced road rage. I wanted to track that person down, and, and I wanted to flip them the bird and tell them how I felt. But I realized, you know what, that's not the way I should be acting. And instead of yielding to that feeling, I yielded to what I knew was right in the sight of God. That's, in my opinion, that's how you gain righteous living. By, by leaders walking people to the scripture so they can find out what would God have me to do, and then making it applicable to daily living. Now, I got to go home from there and then study it out myself as well. But it starts with that, with that relationship that's transparent and practical. Wow. I love him. Rabbi Matcheson, I just listening to him talk is so, there's just something very relatable about he was the very, way that he says everything. And he was such a funny guy. You know, I want to be clear, there was quite a few people since we've been airing these all week, there's been a few people to go to social media saying, who are these guys? Mm -hmm. They wanted to know more. So we have Rabbi Michael Matcheson from Beaches Synagogue, and we also have Bishop George Davis from Impact Church right here in Jacksonville, two phenomenal faith leaders come from different backgrounds and that is what I wanted to do. I wanted to mix it up, okay. different backgrounds. And next week we're gonna also have two more of our faith leaders um, that is going to talk about something different, but I hope you will tune in for this faith conversation that I'm calling it the faith exchange because I'm exchanging it from them to you. And you know what, if you go out and do something with it good, if not, Oh, well, but you at least I'm bringing new. it to you. It's Absolutely. definitely interesting. Now, we do want to say hi to someone. Uh, I was at Metro Entertainment Complex over the weekend, and I met Clarence, who is probably, I'm not even joking, our biggest fan. He watches every day as he cleans the bar. So, hi, Clarence. Thank you so much for supporting the show. We yes. love you so, so, so much. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys so much for watching the show today. I mean, tomorrow, you guys, mm -hmm. you guys ready for more, uh, more excitement, more hot topics, more everything? Yeah. I'm, I'm always ready. I'm always ready. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Exactly. And you always get a nice little preview of what we're going to talk about by following us on Twitter, at Tweet the Chat. Go like our Facebook, Ladies of the Chat. And then we'll see you right back here tomorrow at 3. Bye. Bye.